afternoon lovely floss tubers welcome back to my channel i'm mad morty i'm on my own today mr morty is off playing with bows and arrows somewhere in north london so after our last video where we talked about french knots and how mr morty hadn't done them before but managed to work his way through them a few of you have actually said yes please to a tutorial so that's what today is floss tube extra french knots you have to excuse the wobbling i've got to try not to knock the desk because it'll make the camera not wobble and this is my first tutorial done from this angle there is another one somewhere out there on the web to do with distress inks good luck finding it i'm not linking to it it's pretty sketchy anyway i have found a scrap of i think this is probably 18 count ada I've prepped it with some stitches already and I've got two needles put together here one for red so that I don't mess about halfway through this video and one with cream I didn't want to go with bright white because it can make it quite difficult for you to see and also I haven't put bright lighting on this because equally that may make it quite difficult for you to see what I'm doing because of the light reflecting on everything so French knots the bane of many people's lives Often you see people do tutorials where they just do it on the fabric. And sometimes you'll have French knots to do out on their own, but most often you'll actually have to do them in the middle of some stitching. So I'm gonna show you today my method for doing French knots. So first things first, let's zoom in a bit. So you can see what I can see, okay. So, oh, and by the way, excuse the sore finger. I um, had an argument with a hatchet. Let's just leave it there. Now, I have here on the back my work. Fairly neat because there's so few stitches and no other colours, funnily enough. So the key thing about actually doing your French knots, it's all about the tension. It's not about how many, well, it is how many times you wrap the thread around the needle because that will define whether or not it is a French knot or a bullion knot and also how you place it back into the fabric. But let's start off. We're going to go in here, put it somewhere in the middle. Now I've only got under three stitches, but you'll see why in a minute. Excuse me blocking the view. So I said it's all about tension. So I always go back under that stitch. You see just here, blocking the view again. And it effectively anchors it, it's a nice firm stitch. Method of starting. And then we're gonna come up. Now sometimes you're told to come up in the middle, sometimes you're told to come up through one of the holes. It doesn't really matter where you are or what you're doing as to where you place it. You place it where you need to. So for this instance, I'm placing it just here. Now, the next thing I always do is I make a loop, basically. I hope you can see that okay. I make a loop with my, my thread. And I'm gonna go in the direction that I've come out of that hole. And wind, here's my needle. I wind the thread around the needle twice for a French knot. And then I take that needle right back down to that th that work, as you can see here, I hope, I'm blocking the view, there we go, right back down to that work and I keep the tension on it. And very carefully, I either go back down the same hole or I might try and go a thread or so to the left. Can you see? I'm not sure how clear it is. I've come up there, I'm just going next to it. And then, oops, sorry pull through. There's your French knot. See? So to show you it's not a fluke, let's carry on. And then I anchor my thread through the back of my work. Again, it's all about that tension because if you're loose at the back, <laughs> if you're loose at the back, it's not likely to maintain any tension and it'll pull through. So we've got that anchored roughly where we're going in. So we go through there. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> okay. 
and again we make that loop yeah we go in the direction that thread is going so we're going to close that loop it it literally is we're making a knot we go round that needle twice we maintain our tension and sometimes that happens it slips off so you just do that again round the needle twice she says and now the problem with going back down through exactly the same hole is sometimes if you're using a very fine thread or you're doing it with just a single strand it can be so fine and so tight it pulls straight back down through the hole and then you end up doing it looser and making it looser means that you end up with a loose knot that just comes apart so I do prefer to not go down the same hole but to go slightly to the left so you can see there that's where I came up I'm gonna go ever so slightly away from it so like catching another thread like so keep the tension on that end pull that thread through and there you go And you've got some very secure French knots. And to finish off, we'll just go through those threads at the back once, secure it, and go through the next several to tuck that thread away. French knots. They're secure, they're not going to fall through. So I hear you say, so Morty, that works, yeah. But what happens if I haven't got stitching to do it over? What if I just have navy blue fabric, for example, and I want to put French knots of snowflakes or stars? out in the middle of nowhere or grey for raindrops or something what do I do then how do I secure my thread well I've never had to do that before but thanks to the lovely Teresa Little Stitcher who did a really clear tutorial on how to do a pin stitch I realized that the answer lies in a pin stitch which most of you are probably thinking is really obvious but it's such a secure means by which to start and end your thread that you can easily use it with a French knot. Now I've seen Teresa do hers where she starts her pin going in that way. You can also start from the back. So let's see. Um, some go from corner to corner, some go from side to side. I think for a French knot pin stitch going in from side to side is possibly the easiest way. So what I've done is I've actually split the threads either side there. So if you see here, I can try I can try zooming in. I'm not sure I'm going to be there. You can see I'm I'm in neither of I'm not in that hole and I'm not in that hole. I'm in between. And I then take it into the middle of the Ada. And this would work if you've got even weave as well. Now I'm going to come back out that side of that block. Hopefully this is going to work. Otherwise I'll be cutting another piece. Back into the middle. Okay. And you've secured your thread. You can snip that off a bit. At the end it's at the back. Nobody's going to see it. So then, depending on whether you've got to go across across or come up, I wouldn't come back up through the middle. I'd go back down through the middle. So I would recommend come up at that corner or bottom corner. You can start your French knot wherever you like. Okay. And then we do the same thing again. So we've got our loop. 
pull that thread to the left. If you are a lefty, you do it to the right and go around that way. It doesn't make any difference. But as long as you close that loop to make your knot, wind the thread around the needle twice and go back into the middle of your pin stitch. Keep that tension because we're making a knot. You tie a knot tight, don't you? Hmm? Sorry. It can be quite tough to pull through. But there's your French knot. Makes sense. If you've got another one to do fairly close, you can jump across. I mean, obviously, it's not recommended to jump across light fabrics with a dark thread. So I wouldn't be doing this with the black. You can see there, that's just pulled that tight. Or you can finish off with another pin stitch. So I'm just going to do another French knot here. Wind round twice. Pull that needle right back down. Go slightly there you go let's just, let's just go one little thread over so we're not going in exactly the same we're going to go next to it keeping that tension pull it through there's your knot okay and then to finish it off let's do a reverse pin stitch so come up up one side, tuck that back down in the middle. Hopefully, I'm not going too far out of shot here, it's a bit difficult for me to see. Come back up somewhere else on the other side. Do you know what? I need to find my thumb. Yeah, you know, I've had my glasses on my head all this time. I'm just going to pop my glasses on. Come back up there. I'm going to close that pin stitch off, back in there, back down the middle. It's mostly hidden by the French knot. Oh, I seem to have a bit of odd thread going on here, which I think, yeah, it's from the back of one of those. So what I'm going to do is very carefully, I'm going to just snip that thread away, there you go. And then that should secure your pin stitch. So let's snip that carefully. Let's get rid of that random piece of thread. And there, your French knots. Now, hopefully, that will help some of you to do your own. Good luck let me know how you get on in the comments so if you've liked what you've watched don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the notification bell and i'll see you next time bye